disentangling from wrong relationships. <laughs> Disentangling from wrong relationships. Hello, y'all. I'm Diana Brienne. Well, you know, I talk about just about every topic, and I don't give suggestions. I don't give advice. I just share with you my opinion on how I deal with different issues. And this morning, I got to thinking about disentangling. I'm not sure why it came to mind, but I thought it was a good subject to talk about. You know, I think most people go into relationships with the right intentions. They seek out a positive relationship. Unfortunately, some relationships, after we've entered into them, we find out they're not as positive as we had once thought. And at that point, we want to disentangle from a relationship like that. And so, for me, I have found that disentangling can be a complex, complicated process. I remember one relationship, as I talked about in another video, was with a friend many, many years ago, a woman friend. And I saw the signs and signals early on that she wasn't, you know, the best quality of a person to become involved with. But for a number of different reasons, I let myself befriend her. Because, well, I try to think the best about people. Well, I still try to think the best about people, but I look for signs and signals now early on. And if I see very negative signs and signals, I back up and continue to back up. And if I determine that that relationship is not going to be a good one down the line, I completely uh, in some way end it. Whether it's through fading away, which I think is a great way to let go of relationships, or whether it's to acknowledge and say I'm ending the relationship, which can be a little bit more complicated because some people don't like that. Most people don't. And so the way I did that relationship, unfortunately, it had to be an abrupt ending. She had come to visit me. She was very nasty to people that, that were around. And uh, I just simply told her that she had to leave. And of course, she didn't like that. She wrote me nasty letters after and all of that. But I did it in the right way. I was kind. I was polite. Because I believe that when we leave a relationship, uh, if possible, leave it better than when we entered. If, if we can't even do that, try to leave it on a polite, kind note, whether we let it fade away or we, whether we have to be more abrupt as I was. And so uh, I learned early on from that point on to assess relationships in steps and stages as I go into it and look for anything that is amiss. And if it's greatly amiss, um, then I pull back enough to assess the situation, assess whether I should go any further into the relationship. But what about relationships that we entered with good intentions or frivolous intentions, not really thinking much about it, and now we find ourselves all wrapped up and en entwined in a relationship that's not healthy for whatever the reasons? Well, it can be complicated to get out of that. Like I said, I believe in trying to leave a relationship as on an, a good note or let it fade away if at all possible. And like I said, it's not always possible to leave a relationship um, and let it just fade away. When you let a relationship fade away, it allows you to hold on to the good memories. And if you do see the person again, you can say, hey, hi, it's good to see you. How are you doing? And then move on your way. Also, when you let things fade away, sometimes those people I become what I call Christmas card friends. Now, I have a lot of friends who are Christmas card friends that are my very dear friends, but I also have some that I really wouldn't want to be in daily contact with that I just keep them as, you know, on a polite basis um, as Christmas card friends. Some I have no contact with whatsoever. I had another friend who had his strong views about politics and 
anyone that didn't agree with him, he didn't like, and he could be very nasty towards. He wasn't really so much nasty towards me as he was others, but it came to a point that because my views were somewhat different than his, um, you could feel the resentment building up intensely. And he would make comments on my social media that were not nice, that had nothing to do with, you know, anything about politics. And um, so I just, you know, had to completely back off. I did it in the politest way that I knew possible. And I think that when we can leave a relationship on a polite standing, we're so much better off than stirring the pot and making things worse. And when we leave on a very, very negative note, often what happens is it complicates things. So what about relationships like marriage? You married the wrong person or perhaps you married them and they really significantly changed for the worst and we're never going to change for the better. Well, first of all, I don't believe in throwing marriages away. I believe in working on them and restoring them to what they used to be, if at all possible. But in the event that someone married the wrong person, um, for whatever the reason is, disentangling can be quite complicated and sometimes even a third party, a mediator needs to be involved in some way to disentangle. But making matters worse by being angry or saying nasty things is only going to make it worse. But what happens when you're doing kind things and being nice and the person continues to be nasty? That can be a problem and that does happen in some relationships. And that's often where a third party, a mediator, you know, whether it's a, a, a pastor, uh, a priest, um, you know, a psychologist, a counselor, where, you know, whatever, sometimes those kinds of people are necessary in those situations. We always hope not. We always hope that things can be left on a good note. Unfortunately, that's not always the way they are. But when we think about it, most often, if we had paid attention right from the start and looked for signs and signals that something may be amiss with that person in a potential relationship, I think often we could have avoided all of that entanglement. And so for me, I always look at relationships as I go into them in steps and stages to make sure that the further I go, that truly it's right for my life. And if I detect something that is amiss, sometimes I just stay right where I'm at in that relationship and don't progress any further. Sometimes I back off and sometimes I end the relationship by either letting it fade away or by acknowledging that I'm ending it. For me, I think the best way is to politely let it go. Just let it go and be on a good note. And if that's, if that's possible, and I think to a large degree it is possible. Unfortunately, some relationships, we just can't let it fade away. We have to acknowledge that we're ending it. And so we always want to do things in the right way when we're disentangling. But disentangling usually is never or rarely an easy process. I hope you like, share, subscribe to both of my channels, Grandma's Porch with Diana Brienne Fairchild and Diana Brienne Fairchild. May God bless you, and I hope to talk to you soon again. So from Grandma's Porch to wherever you're at, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. to relax.